Got a Honda in the shop that's severely overheated. Now I already did some repairs to it and got it running, but because it overheated so much, we need to do some additional testing. So we'll start with a compression test. So let's get to it. Today I'm going to show you how to do a compression test on a Honda. And you'll have to forgive the noise today. It's hot out. I got to run the cooler and bring in fresh air. First thing we want to do, get it up to operating temperature, which I'm doing now. Typically that means that our cooling fans came on twice. Okay, now that the cooling fans have gone on and off twice, we'll go ahead and shut the car off. To do this test today, I'm going to be using this compression tester from OTC, part number 5605. Now we want to go ahead and disable the spark. On newer systems that have a coil on plug, we can just take all the coils out and unplug them, and then we're good. The spark will be disabled. Make sure all the coils are out, all of them are unplugged. In this case, we have a distributor on this old vehicle, so I'm just going to go ahead and unplug the distributor, and that will disable our spark. Up next, we need to disable our fuel injectors. Some models are out in the open like this one, easy to get to. Other models, not so easy to get to. In that case, we may want to go to the fuse box and start pulling fuses for the uh, injectors and we can disable them that way. If we have a newer vehicle and we have a bi-directional scan tool, we can go in and command the fuel injectors off. Now when, when we do that on Hondas, we have to go back in and reset the PCM, so that's always something to be aware of. On this vehicle, because these are out, out in the open and nice, we can just go ahead and unplug all four fuel injectors and that's how I'm going to disable this system. All four of them are unplugged. Our fuel injectors are disabled. Now we'll go ahead and pull our spark plug wires off. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull all the spark plugs out. And I've just had them out recently fixing the timing belt on this. So they should come out pretty easy. Of course, we're going to need the appropriate socket. In this case, we need a 5 8 inch. And this one is a magnetic one made for spark plugs. Remember, they're going to be hot. Refrain from touching them with your fingers. Now, because I just had these spark plugs out, I wasn't worried about crap down in the spark plug tubes. If these have been in there a while, we want to take compressed air and blow them out first before we take the spark plugs out. Coming over to our compression test kit, of course, we're going to need our gauge. And if we follow it along, it has a quick coupler on there. And then we're going to need a spark plug adapter. We need to look at our spark plug. This is the style right here. And we look and figure out which one's the closest. It should be this one right here. So if I could get it out, this is the one we're going to use. We'll just connect it right there. And we'll just thread this in where the spark plug goes. This kit has Schrader valves built in, so that way when we do our compression test, it will keep the uh, pressure inside on our gauge. It won't just let it bleed right off. So all we need to do is just thread this in. And we have to remember, we don't want to put too long of an adapter down in there. It's better to have it a little bit short than too long. If it's too long, the piston can come up and hit it and do some damage. So we just need to thread this in. There's a little rubber seal down the bottom. So we just need to get it to seal up. We don't need to try to kill it. Now we just connect our gauge. Now we're ready to go. Okay, now in order to do the test, I'm gonna have an assistant go inside the vehicle and we need the throttle wide open. So they're gonna put the foot down on the gas pedal, hold it all the way to the floor. Now we've disabled any, everything so nothing will start. And we're going to crank it over and we want, OTC says to do five revolutions so you'll hear it go dun -na 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 -na. that would be three. Dun -na 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 it would be five. So you have to kind of have an ear for it. Honda says they want us to do it between six and ten revolutions. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go with the lower spec on Honda and we'll do six. Now we want to do the same on each cylinder so that way we are uh, testing them all exactly the same. And we want our minimum compression to be 135 PSI. So 
I'm gonna have the, my assistant go in there. We're gonna crank this engine six times and see what it does. Now in the case of this four cylinder, this is the front of the engine, so that means this is gonna be number one. This is two, three, and four. Okay, throttle wide open, go ahead and crank it. Now it's gonna sound different because uh, we don't have any spark plugs in. Go ahead, crank it. Okay, and looks like we're right about 150 on this cylinder. So I'm gonna mark that down and then we can bleed it off. Let's see, that is 150. Yeah, it's 150 exactly. So we can bleed it off like that and then we'll go to the next cylinder. Okay, throttle wide open. Go ahead and do this next cylinder, crank it. And it looks like we're at about 165 on that. Hopefully you can see, 165. Actually, looking at it closer, we're at about 162. We're gonna go with 162. Okay, we'll do the same with number three. Wide open throttle, go ahead and crank it. And it looks about the same, about 161, 162. We'll say 161. Okay, cylinder number four. Wide open throttle, go ahead and crank it. And I'm gonna say 157. 157. Make sure the little rubber O-ring comes out with it. Okay, so let's go over it. We had 150 PSI on this one, 162, 161, and 157. So actually, they were all fairly close, considering the age of this engine and everything that it's been through, that's not too bad. Now, the generally accepted rule is we don't want uh, more than 10% difference between each cylinder. So our lowest one was 150 here. Our highest one was 162. So that's a variance of about 12 PSI. And if we do our 10% rule, 10% of you know 150 or 160, that's roughly 15 or 16 PSI. So we're inside of that. Honda's rule on these engines is we don't want it to vary more than 29 PSI, which is pretty high. Now, obviously, we're not even close to that. Now, the lowest we want to see on this Honda engine and a lot of Honda engines is 135 PSI. So we're above the, uh, the minimum. And if this engine were brand new, it would probably be somewhere around 180, maybe 185 on a brand new, perfectly running engine. So considering how old this vehicle is and everything it's been through, <laughs> That compression test is actually pretty darn good. Well, that's it for compression testing. I'm going to do a coolant leak test on this vehicle, so look for that video coming out soon. And as always, if the video helped you out and you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.